Uh, yeah, someone just subscribed three minutes ago as if they were seeing something and subscribed. But um, there's nothing there. So let's get started. Tonight, our topic is um, sex versus the soul. And each week that I'm on, I'm going to um, go into a specific area of it. It's going to get really heavy. Um, we are going to dig into your childhood. We're going to dig into that childhood. We're going to talk about, um, at least in our minds, um, have thoughts. I'm going to trigger thoughts to you on your first sexual encounter. Um, scientifically, biologically, how important is your first sexual encounter? Is it more important to the female than it is for the male? We're going to talk about how... Um, how dangerous our sexual evolution really is. Uh, we think the church, we think um, any religious movement or any uh, belief system that is contrary to open sex uh, is outdated. And um, we're going to serve you notice at all of those, again, if you tag on your pages, all those that you influence, we're gonna serve notice that there was a reason and a purpose while sex should have been contained in the household with the white picket fence and the two and a half children and the doggy, because uh, who let the dogs out? Sex has uh, catapulted to where it is now. Uh, I don't think there's no stopping it. I think it's going to be virtually impossible unless you raise up uh, another generation with morals and values when it comes to uh, sex and the evolution of sex. Uh, other than that, we have gone berserk, and I don't think there's no way to pull these horses, if you will, back in the stall. And what we've done is major damage to the original intent and will, which is the purpose of what God intended for us, the beauty of it. We're losing so much of what was intended in sex between two people we're, we're losing so much of what God intended um, in waiting for that sexual partner that I'm speaking with a lot of couples, married couples, believers who are not having sex in their marriage because sex before the marriage was so prosperous and plentiful that by the time we got in the marriage, and it's more for the female than the male, that she's unable to physically convert the energy that she used to put towards sex outside of marriage to how it fits in a marriage. And then let me put the icing on top of our Sunday that we just made. Not just how to have sex in marriage now, how to have holy sex in marriage now. Oh, there's a big difference. You want to know right off on the bat, you want to jump about six weeks with me and find out what the real difference is? in our soul. It's in our soul. That when a woman specifically has given herself away so many times, in most instances, we'll learn tonight that she has given it away for a specific reason. She has given it away with a specific intent in mind. She had motive when she gave her body to that man. And whether it was communicated or not, she's not getting back what she gave and the motive in which she gave it away for. So there's pieces of her that are broken. And thank you, Apostle Darrow. And by the time she meets that great man, prayerfully that godly man, by the time she says, uh, I do, she's so jacked up in her soul that sex, which used to be such a high priority and on the highway to heaven when she was single, is now on a dark, lonely street as a married woman. Shame on us. And I'll take the responsibility and by saying it, that the sexual evolution that has been perpetrated through TV, magazines, books, psychologists, commercials, in our homes, television, um, the Woodstock concerts, um, all of these, the age of Aquarius, all of these things, they branded sex, but did not understand the purpose for sex. And because sex has been branded and stereotyped 
and stigmatized as this free, loose thing. Let's everybody, what does it say in Ecclesiastics? Let's, let's uh, uh, eat, drink, and be merry. We took this sexual evolution, um, evolution to an all-time high. And I don't believe, I don't believe, I'm not a sex therapist, but I do not believe that these proverbial horses that we let out the barn, out of the stable, we're ever going to be able to get this back in. Unless somehow a generation is retaught and retrained to honor sex. Most people that I have spoken with in regards to sex, 40, 50, and 60 year olds I'm talking about in regards to sex, never knew the power that came with sex when they started having sex. Isn't that amazing? How many of us can contest with that? I'm going to tell you just right off the bat from my first experience, I rushed it because every single girl that I hung out with was already having sex one to two years in when I was still a virgin. So I went around trying to find maybe some, um, you know, some sucker. Well, I ended up, of course, being the sucker just to take my virginity away. I didn't like him. I didn't want him. I didn't want to build anything with him. But when I get with the guy I wanted, I wanted to have that experience under my belt. So I wanted just some guy, you hear motive, to take this virginity away from me as if it was a curse, as if it was a, a virus. Take this virginity away from me so I can be in the crowd. I can be in what the majority is doing. I can be popular and I don't have to be embarrassed when I get with the guy that I had my eye on. I was living in California at the time. I had my eye on a guy. God, let me go and get free tonight. It just came to me too. Both of their names was Maurice. Isn't that funny? So the guy that I pushed my sexuality on was Maurice and he was known as a player. He, every girl in our little project, if you will, Maurice had slept with. So when they all told me, go to Maurice, he'll take your virginity away. I went to Maurice because there was another guy, Maurice, that lived in a different part of California that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. You see my motive? I had one that I was going to use to take it away so I wouldn't be embarrassed with the one that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. I had motive for my sexual experiences. And I don't care who you are, female, you have motive with your sexual experience. And mainly because we are not taught of the power of our sexuality. So we get married and we meet a great man, a godly man, and now sex is different. How do we do it without motive? Because now he wants sex from me because he loves me. He's attracted to me. He adores me. He wants sex with me because I am his relief, his release. I am the place that he goes to when he has urges and needs. And uh, we've already had children, let's just say. So it's not just for, sex is not just for um, um, pro procreating. It's not just for recreating life. Sex now is because I have vowed myself to this man that I will not withhold sex from him because he's my husband, but yet you get married and there's more withholding in marriage than there is in your single life. Oh, I wish above all things that we would prosper. We have to understand the power of our sexuality. And at the same time, as I've been teaching since 2017, we have to understand the power of our soul. Because our soul is the memory bank. It is the hardware to our software system. And the soul never forgets. The soul makes indelible impressions. Your soul, whether you remember him or her at all, your soul remembers precisely the person that it has sex with. The soul has worked with the body and has remembered their DNA. Oh, the soul. See, there's many things we do that we think we can forget or perhaps have forgotten in our, uh, in our um, conscious thought thinking. But in our subconscious thinking, in the depths of our soul, our soul never forgets. Put that on the screen wherever you are. Our soul never forgets. It is impossible. Hypnotists try it and it really doesn't work. The soul never forgets. So there is no way to have sex without your soul. 
And many young women that I talk to today, um, they, they tell me that, you know, I don't even use my soul to have sex anymore because in order for me to believe that there's some attachment that's going to come out of this or some relationship or a family down the line would lead me into brokenness and hurt and pain and I cannot go there anymore. So when I lay down with a guy, I lay down detached. I lay down without my soul. Sweetheart, I had to tell her, it is impossible to do anything without your soul. And your soul is very involved in your sexual activities. You may forget, but something can trigger your soul. It could be his perfume. It could be the first record you dance to. I don't know what y'all call it now, first song maybe, but for us it was record. It's the first record we danced to. It could be the park we visited. It could be the beach we walked. It could be the all night conversation that we had on the phone. Your soul never forgets. And that's why deliverance can't just come to our spirit man. It has to come to our soul. Sexual deliverance as well has to come to our soul because we have to transform the mind in order for sex to be recoded and rethinking and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We can't just um, scare away demons. Boo! We can't just make demons go away. Our personalities, the, 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 the whole system that is set up by the, the kingdom of darkness is not just to, uh, to still kill and destroy our physical life. He alters every experience that we have, alters our personalities. So our personalities are altered when the demons have already been expelled and moved on to someone else. So how do you teach a woman how to be chastened in her body when she has bought into the belief system that the only way to get a man and to keep a man is by giving that away. I have a young lady that inboxed me. I've been counseling her for about a year. She inboxed me a couple months ago and said she's been 30 day pornography free. Yes, my brother. He said he had to pull over for that truth. You can't have sex without your soul. I don't care how cold or indifferent or good you think you are in bed. Baby, your soul is right there with you. But a young woman that I've been counseling for over a year now um, texted me a couple months ago and said she has finally gone 30 days without pornography. And we celebrate it. And I wish that I could have run to her and just hugged her and just cried and celebrated with her during this quarantine time because that was a big deal for her. She was tossed around in her family as a sexual blow-up doll, if you will. There was no more honor or respect for this little child than a blow-up doll that you can order in the mail. That's how the family treated her. And listen to me, because this is not a discriminatory flat, uh, platform because the soul is neither male nor female, okay? So this is not a discriminato discriminatory platform. She was tossed around her family by male and females. She had an aunt who babysat her and she would stay the night with her aunt. And when the aunt's husband or boyfriend, I don't know what he was, would come in and get in the bed with them at night, he would fool around with the aunt and then he would fool around with her. And as she got older, we had to bring her to the conclusion that her aunt knew this. So she wasn't just uh, molested by men. You know, we make a big deal about that on TV. Um, and boy, I'd like to do a, a detox on that one day with our sexual evolution, how um, men are being um, uh, accused and arrested and thrown in jail for sexual assault and for rape. But how does it actually start? You know, I, I'm not blaming a woman, but there's a way that a woman carries herself that does not... Um, trigger such a response from a man. You know, I learned from my husband that a woman could have a lot of clothes on and a man can still tell what her body looks like. You know, so y'all got this skill that we don't have. And I'm like, well, she's got that big old thing on. I can't tell what she looks like, but her face is beautiful. My husband says, she's got a nice body. Well, how you know she got a nice body? Like y'all got this skill that you can tell how a woman's body is. So I'm not making it that you have to wear a big coverall and look like a nun. But what I'm saying is the high intense sexuality that God 
creator has given to man has to be so completely out of control and so completely hard for him to control with the looseness that women walk around in today. And then we cry sexual assault, sexual uh, rape um, when we're half nude and inviting you into things and then want to say stop when we find out what we wanted to get from you, we not going to get from you. So then we want to cry different things. Well, I'm not going to go there tonight because it's a touch, touchy subject on both parameters. And I'd really have to dedicate the whole night to it because it's that deep. Um, but we're going to stick with tonight, sex and the soul. So let me hit it before we have to get out of here. I think we got on about 831. I don't like to do more than an hour. Um, and we'll get back on again. Um, I'll send notice like I did. If you registered on my website, you will get a notification. I said a no sent a notification out at 7 o'clock. Let me see your hands. How many of y'all got notifications tonight that uh, So Detox was going live and to get your best seat in the house? If you're not getting those notifications, you should go ahead and subscribe, www.suzannemhoward.com, and you will get notifications ahead of time when I'm on. Um, we had problems with YouTube tonight, but YouTube will be upload it and this will come on, on on YouTube tonight as a live stream. Um, but welcome Periscope Facebook all over again. And also um, we are on podcast now so you can carry me around as an MP3. You don't have to watch me. You can listen to me on the track. You can listen to me in the car. You can listen to me at the job, on the bus. You can listen to me anywhere without having to worry about the video footage or YouTube closing while you're trying to be at work with your ear pods in. You can now listen to me in audio form and that is on iTunes. You'll find Suzanne M. Howard. Subscribe to me on iTunes. Um, if you're Google, I'm on Google Podcasts, Suzanne M. Howard. If you have Spotify, I'm on Spotify as Suzanne M. Howard. And I'm on so many other platforms um, I, that I've never heard of. And I'll put those names up tomorrow. But let's get busy here tonight. Somebody wanted me to um, play an introduction song. Let's talk about sex, baby. But I said there'll be some copyright infringements and the video may get blocked. And I don't know. Does anybody know if that thing even works that people post up there? Um, I don't own the rights to this music. Does this even work? Because before, when I um, would play music, just waiting for folks to come on and, you know, whatever for me to fill my cup. Let me fill my cup. Mm, that lemonade is good. And um, I don't know if it works, but before they wouldn't post a video at all because I played songs and music. So does anybody know, does that statement really work? Hey, Pastor Ruth, are you saying yes, that it works to the question? If that statement really works, I'll put it up and then we can get up there tomorrow with salt and pepper and talk about sex, baby, because that's where we're going. I'm going to get in your face. I'm going to get into your past. I'm going to feel, you're going to feel my hand in your gut. And we're going to pull out this incest, molestation, abuse, these lies, these errors, these untruths about sex. We're going to pull back the little pieces of your soul that you have spread out all over the place. I think Juanita Bynum called it sheets. How many sheets she was layered in by bed partners that she had had. That's what we're going to be dealing with. Thank you, Pastor Ruth. That's my girl. All right, let me read this to you and then let us begin. I've talked enough. Let's go. I invite you over these next few weeks to explore the world of your sexuality in ways that perhaps you never have. To consider the power and beauty God pours out on you as a human and as a woman. Why did I uh, put extra notation to woman? Because you are the receptor of him and you have been a receptacle to a lot. So there's greater emphasis on women sexually than men in some cases. And you'll hear about those cases. Your sexual experience with men may be as pure as the driven snow or you may have known enough shame and heartache to fill a book. The good news is that beneath the ashes of our past lies a golden core 
the intrinsic, transcendent reality of being created in the very image of God. He male, she female. If we listen to the longings of the heart God gave us, we will find our way home. Welcome to the sexual journey with Dr. Apostle Suzanne Howard. Let us go. If he wants her just for her body, that splits her. It means that she is good to him only for a part of her. That's why <clears throat> when she slept with him, she wants to know where the relationship is headed. She wants to be integrated. That's the part that the woman brings to it. She craves it. She wants to know that he will be there in the morning and the next morning and the next morning. She wants to know that beyond the sex, he loves her. He wants her all the time. That's a quote by Rob Bell, R-O-B Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. I hear the stories, especially the stories that women tell. When they realize they've lost something in this encounter of sexuality. Some pieces of themselves they fear they can no longer get back. In a guy's arms, a woman feels so powerfully wanted. Like someone is waving a magic wand for a moment over her. Over her insecurities. And everything insecure and broken about her begins to evaporate. Only the sense of being wanted can turn to ashes and the insecurities. Well, those take on a life of their own. There is absolutely no way to tramp around on the Great Barrier Reef. No pun intended on tramp. There is no way to tramp around on the Great Barrier Reef in your fins without disturbing the beautiful plant life. Anyone know about the Great Barrier Reef and how important it is to our ecosystem? Well, an inference is being made here that there is no way for us to put on our fins and walk on the Great Barrier Reef and think that we're not disturbing the plant life. It's just not the way nature or relationships work. Sex outside its intended bonds is as destructive and soul-tearing as it is healing and redemptive inside the bonds that it's meant for. Oh, I've heard the stories that women tell. There are no guarantees in relationships now. We understand that. How many times have friends drilled into you, into your daughters, um, depending on what age that I'm able to speak into your consciousness on tonight. How many times has it been drilled into you? Just go with the flow. Just go with the flow. It's the mantra that a woman often has to hear. Don't say much. Don't do much. Don't ask for anything. Just be pretty. Play it cool and see where the relationship goes. The problem is how many times have you done this before? Oh, I pray you guys tag your daughters, your nieces, any young woman that you know. Let's set up a young woman's conference and teach them from our experiences, sex. Sex. She's got to chop herself up in pieces to go forward. But there is no forward that she can rightfully look for without being seen as needy. This is what the sexual evolution has done to us. This is where we're at tonight. She cannot be seen as needy or she'll lose him or a pushy woman because she'll lose him. From this way of doing relationships, it's so easy to drift from one to the next to the next with little pieces of yourself scattered hither and yon. A man and a woman fall into bed in 2020 
with no promises made, no expectations to which they can hold each other again. What I hope will become apparent as we go through these weeks together is that the road doesn't lead anywhere you really want it to go. And it's possible, really possible, to get back what you've lost and to experience relationship with men much differently. I begin with the comforting reality that regardless of our background, we are all telling the same story. The same story of losses that are difficult to absorb, fears that keep us awake at night, and dreams that have been incubating in us <laughs> since we were quite small. We are all fundamentally the same. The loosening of our sexual boundaries, the pressures to be sexual, plots our course in life in very noticeable ways. The next time I'm on, I'm going to read some testimony stories and some names that have been changed. But tonight I want to reference a woman named Donna. She's in her second year of college and she finally has begun to wonder where her sexual activity is headed. What is the point, she asks. Why does she feel so numb inside? Anybody know that numb feeling? Why does she feel so numb inside? As though her body has disconnected from the rest of her. Donna watches other couples and wonders if she will ever know what it feels like to have a man love her. Just for her. A vague sense of regret and loss she cannot name follows her around every day. She longs to retrace her steps and find the innocence her soul once knew. Can I get some hands on that one? How many of you long, you wish you could retrace the steps? I'm not talking about regrets. I'm not talking about, oh, if I did it over, I wouldn't be who I am today. You might even be better than you who are than who you are today. So let's throw that out, that baby and bathwater out. Let's throw the whole thing out that if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't be who I am today. You might be greater. How many of you truthfully can, can search your soul for a moment? Father, lead us by the Holy Spirit. You be the micro examiner on tonight. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. The chief counselor, the paraclete. Take us tonight on microsurgery and go into the depths of our soul tonight that we may reconnect with ourselves again to the truth of ourselves again and that we may be honest tonight and say it is me father I've been on a sexual evolution and I've ended up on a dead end I've ended up in the center of a major highway. I've ended up in places that I have my soul just left, my heart, my, my hope, my zeal. I've, I've lost it in a sexual world that I've lived in. I bought in to the lies of the magazines at the checkout, the reality women on TV. I bought into the lies that if my breasts aren't perfect and my rear isn't big and my waist isn't small and my hips aren't big and my stomach isn't flat and my lips aren't big enough and my cheeks aren't tight up, I bought in that nobody would love me unless I'm perfect. But how long is perfect perfect before it needs to be perfected again? How much is that life costing you? How much time has that thinking cost you? How much evolution are you willing to throw pieces of you all over the place? Is there a part of you that longs to retrace the steps and to find the innocence of your soul once again? So when you betroth him, when you marry him, you're not marrying every piece of where you've been or marrying with so many pieces of you vacant. How many of y'all got a vacant sign on you? How many of you got a sign 
that says full, no more vacancies. You want to be married. You have dreams of marriage. You're aspiring to be married. But you know that sign says the inn is full, no more vacancies. Because so much of you has been left in so many places, even going back to your first sexual encounter. If it is true, that which I stated tonight, that your first sexual encounter is biologically, scientifically engraved in a piece of your soul that we will talk about medically with facts to back it. What if your first sexual experience was horrific? How is that showing up in your life today? What if it was taken from you? What if you were violated? What if you were sodomized? What if you were used like the young girl I talked about when I opened, like a rag doll in her family from men and women? What if that was your first sexual experience? How can you ever be whole again? There's got to be parts of you that longs to retrace those steps and find the innocence of a soul you once knew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Minister to us tonight. Water us in those dry and barren places in our life. Speak to my innocence again. Because more than likely the person that I have become, I don't even like. The pressure to be sexual, to be beautiful, the pressure to wonder if anybody loves me for me has consumed me. Thank you, Sheila. And I'm the one tonight. It's me. It's me. It's me tonight. Who are you? It's me tonight. Standing in the need of this prayer and this teaching. I don't want to die broken. I don't want to live another day broken. I don't want to feel that I can't keep him or attract him or her if I don't give another piece of me away. The problem is, I don't know if I have any more to give. Speak to my innocence, paraclete, Holy Spirit. I'm reading your comments. Get free, y'all. That was Donna. Numb Donna. How about Emily? Emily's introduction to her own sexuality came from the most injurious of all possible roots, her favorite brother. Her favorite brother used to slip into her room at night just as she was turning 12, where he would hold her in his arms and fondled her changing body. The bittersweet experience of hating yourself while enjoying intimacy never meant to be was profoundly ingrained in Emily's psyche. Let me read it again. Her favorite brother slipped into her room at night just as she was turning 12. Holy Spirit, comfort her, minister to our hurting souls on tonight, the young men and the old men and the young women and the old women. Minister to our souls tonight. You be our healer. Just as she was turning 12, where he held her in his arms and fondled her changing body, the bittersweet, I want y'all to hear that, experience of hating yourself because you slept with your brother. Your first sexual experience was with your brother. Hating yourself. Yet your physical body enjoying the feeling. Your body doesn't know it's your brother. Your mind doesn't know it's your brother. Your body just knows it feels good. Your body wants to feel good. That's the hardest part for people, male or female, who've been molested. When they reached a point where their body responded orgasmically and enjoyed the experience but the experience was a violation to them dear lord minister to us tonight the bittersweet experience of hating yourself while you enjoyed intimacy never meant to be 
was profoundly ingrained in Emily's psyche. Being date raped in high school just seemed like another, like one more act in a bad play of her life. With the sexual walls in her life broken down, Emily accepted the terms of the inevitable. A relationship with a man comes with a sexual price tag. That's what she believes. That's what she brought into. Sex is part of the dues you pay to keep the relationship. Look what she's partnering with. Look at the thought process that she's partnering with. Sex is part of the dues you pay to keep the relationship. What happens when she gets married? What is in her mind when he reaches over because he desires her? Not all the women that his eyes have laid uh, contact with all day long. He touches her because he desires her. But what is her response? Sex is part of the dues you pay. And her husband just becomes another due that she owes. You see the thinking? She has had quite a few of those already. The fog and pain after each breakup leads to one poor choice in men after another. Emily feels as though she steps in and out of two lives. Listen to Emily. On Sunday mornings, come on y'all, she's in church. Emily, whose first experience was with her brother, who has the bittersweet, knowing what it feels like to be loved and hugged and coddled and desired and wanted, but by a family member. Then date raped in school and then bought into this mindset that sex is not something to be shared and love and joy and wonder with a man, but it's the dues you pay in order to keep relationship. So now she's in church on Sunday morning. We're not going to get into that one. She plays the flute in worship. She sincerely wants to follow God, but her sexual life feels out of control. She can't reconcile her lifestyle with her beliefs about God. Come on, let it register. That was a whole lot right there. I read it slow. I repeated it twice from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Let's work this thing out that it may leave our feet tonight. Her life, she struggles with reconciling with her beliefs about God. You see why we have to minister better to people? We wonder why they're not growing. We wonder why there's... Uh, three steps forward and four steps back. We wonder why doubt comes into play. People are struggling with their lifestyle, with their past. That's right, Cheryl, with the history. And it impacts when it's time to love on God and your belief in God. In any direction you turn now, women feel just not the opportunity, but the pressure to be sexual. On any given day, you can reach for at least two magazines that will give you the latest tips on how to do a man as though sex is assumed between two mature adults as though it is a woman's job to provide the best experience possible as though a woman should be able to shield her heart while she bears her body on cue. That's not, that's too much stress. All of us, Christian and non, find ourselves swimming in the same cultural soap. We cannot help but be affected. I hear similar stories in different parts of the state and even in the country now when I speak at seminars on soul detox, and especially when women bring me in, I can get into the nitty gritty. Even though I was at one event in New Haven and there was men there and I got into the nitty gritty of sex, I think they left, <laughs> you know, sex in church, Sex in the family, sex with men and women conversations. Woo. Almost anywhere, we're all saying the same things. I was swept into major sexual experiences early on. 
before I even knew what was happening. Often, we feel like we've been sexually traded and we have sexually traded little bits of our soul that can't get back. This girl says, I was so afraid I'd lose this guy that I felt like I had to have sex with him. What happens with that mindset when she gets married? It's hard to hold a line. Listen to this. It's hard to hold a line when a woman senses a guy can get what he wants from three other women if she refuses. Look at the competition. It's hard to hold a line. It's hard to have values and morals in this world. It's not impossible. Hear my wording. I'm picking it carefully. It's hard to hold a line. If you don't do what everyone else is doing, when he or she can go and get it from three other places, and they tell you this, women are paying a tremendous price for the loosening of sexual boundaries. Male and female are paying a sexual price, a tremendous price for the loosening of sexual boundaries. We're paying it in broken hearts, broken families, lost children, lost time, and a confused sense of of self. Many people that I meet in counseling sessions have had sex before they even knew who they were. But yet, there's still often I hear this longing for romance. People who still believe in love, people who still believe that there's this one special person out for them. There's still this longing for romance. Wouldn't you secretly love for a guy to break his neck, proverbial, to get to know you just because you are interesting to him. Not the 36, 28, 36. Remember, as I opened early on, this isn't a male or female thing. This is a soul thing. This is what we have allowed to hit us. Let's just stick with America and our sexual evolution. Even as believers, we're caught up in this craziness and we're passing it down to our children. How many people are you liking on Facebook? There's a, there's a guy that I, I, I used to listen to on um, Facebook Lives. He used to come on there and he started out. Then I found out he had an agenda. He started out um, giving business tips and how he became an influencer and how he grew his platform and how he um, was able to zoom in on one area uh, uh, of influence and um, how he coaches and mentors so many other people now. So I'm okay, it's a few minutes in the morning. So I would click him on in the morning, brushing my teeth, and I just listen to him. No big deal, right? All of a sudden, all the JPEGs, all the photos for his page is about him and his lover in their sexual garments, him and his lover in the bathtub together, him and his lover half naked, at least from the waist up in the kitchen together. And I realized that that old slew foot snake enemy started out wooed us in on business platforms and now basically has pornography all over my facebook timeline page you see the agenda you see the motive that works behind things you start out watching a reality show because it's black women i want to connect with my sisters we finally have a show that we can connect with, with each other on talking about loosening the reins Losing values and morals, picking men because you want children, and then wondering why the men aren't there after when they know you picked them just because you wanted a, ch a child. I, there's two reality shows on TV I could tell you that have done that. And then they, they, they attack the man for him running around with other women. He never settled down with you. L watch the platforms. How can you start out giving me business smarts and business sense? And now you're pushing your homosexual agenda on me. That every time I go on my timeline, I got to see pictures or where the video stopped of you with your partner. I don't even think anybody want to see me and my husband like that, unless it was pornography, of course. But who wants to see that? But it's pushed in our face and it's it's subtle and yet it's 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 loud and it's addicting because there's a zone in our brains that we have to learn about. This is all chemically related. 
There's a zone in our brain that is triggered through our eyes. It's triggered through our senses. It's, tri it's triggered through our, our taste. That's why we get this, this, this triggering for addictions of sugar and drugs. And we get this triggering for pornography through our eyes because they send signals to our brain. And there's a sexual pleasure zone in our brain. The same part of our brain that is triggered by cocaine and heroin is triggered by pornography. Oh, I got an A on that class. I passed the class and got the t-shirt. The part of your brain that is triggered for sexual responses, we use now for cocaine, heroin, pornography. Same part of the brain that was supposed to be between him and her, she and he. They are one. So we're stimulated by billboards. We're stimulated by magazines. He's stimulated all day long, the poor brother. And then he comes home to you who see him as a due. You must pay to keep him. God help us. Help us, Father. But yet, there's some light. There are still some that are longing for romance. Is there a part of you that still longs for a guy to, you know, when I'm in church and I'm talking to someone and my husband's at the other end of the church talking to someone and I happen to scan the room to check for him and I, I look and he's scanning the room at the same time and he's looking for me and we'll hit eyes across the room. There's a such a powerful connection going through that room together that we have connected on other and new levels of intimacy that when we see each other and we just hit those eyes there's such a connection across that room that no one even knows what's going on while we're having conversations with other people such a powerful connection that only god has given us to have on this earth i don't have it with six other people in the room we're not supposed to have it with six other people in the room because there's such a longing that when I see him look at me or some of the words he says or when he looks me up and down and he smiles or he looks me up and down and he says, you look good today. He said that to me last week. He says, where are you going? It's like, I'm just going to go out to Target. I mean, that's a big deal right now in quarantine. Target's open. So I got dressed up, had full frontal on, hair was done. You know, I'm, I'm going to Target and I was feeling good. So the energy was there and the, the vibes and, you know, the endorphins and stuff was working through me. And he came in the kitchen and he was like, where are you going? He sensed it. He saw it. I said, Target? Why Target getting all that? Because I'm on quarantine. And I got to dress up and go somewhere. But he sensed it. And it felt good to have someone, not 10 someones, someone look at me the way he looked at me. Do you long for that? Do you believe in that? Are you getting that if you're married? Do you hope for that? It's possible. There's a growing awareness that something beautiful between men and women is being lost in the rush to be sexual. That's actually the basis for the kind of love and romance that last. In survey after survey, women say they miss the sense of romance of being pursued by a man just for themselves. There's a growing awareness that something beautiful between men and women is being lost in the rush to be sexual. Some call it lost civility, the notion that a woman is a prize in her own right, worth crossing the dance floor, worth crossing the floor of the church, the dance floor of life, to get to know each other, to get to know him, to get to know her on a deeper level is no longer assumed. Indeed, the death of romance that we are experiencing now has become a universal moan among human beings. In the 1960s, you know, the doors opened. They swung wide open. I tell you, I don't think we can close them. They swung wide open into sexual experiences. And sexual experiences got blown off the hinges. It seemed to be where all the happy people were living. It was like we thought we had invented sex, according to C.S. Lewis. He remarked that once that sex is such a subline experience, who would ever think it produced babies? You would never think it produced babies. And for the first time in history, it didn't. 
birth control came in. A woman could take a pill and her worries of getting pregnant were next to none. The consequences of sleeping together did not arrive in nine months wrapped in a soft blanket, crying for his mama and his daddy. Other consequences were present, of course, but they went underground, deep underground, deep into the realm of soul and spirit, where the damage is much harder to calculate. People have been sleeping around in and out of the wrong beds since the dawn of time. I'm not talking about anything new. Look at campus life. Look at our colleges right now. They're going to jail. They're being arrested. They're being murdered. Campus life, almost anywhere now, has become a four-year immersion experience in every nuance of sexual freedom. A woman can't act shocked when a man in a towel emerges from her roommate's door, nor question why it might be a different guy than the one two weeks before. Oh, I've got to get ready to go that she would feel hurt or betrayed when a man moves through roommates. Even more that she would feel hurt or betrayed when a man moves on is a sign of weakness in her. This is the first cardinal rule. Do not attach. With this as a backdrop, it's easy as Christians to feel that our sexual slip-ups are less grievous by comparison. Maybe we aren't sleeping around with random people. Maybe we're not. Maybe the sexual experience we engage in outside of marriage with someone we may even hope to marry still affects us. It never works to compartmentalize our sexual lives from our spiritual lives. Never. Our sexuality, as well as our experience of God, is lived from our core. Say that with me. You don't have to type it. Say it in your home. It never works to compartmentalize our sexual lives from our spiritual lives. Our sexuality, come on, our sexuality as well as our experience of God is all lived from our core. When I hear the stories that emerge from the sexual lives and I sense the lack of self-respect, the blow to their dignity, the choices in the men and the women that they chose, out of a fog of pain and loss, a deep note of grief sounds within me. I find myself wanting to protest. You are meant to be loved and valued and cherished for the rest of your life by a man or a woman whose face lights up when they see you. Let me speak this into your soul again. You deserve, you matter. You are meant to be loved and valued and cherished first by yourself. For the rest of your life by a man whose face lights up when he sees you. Whether a woman marries or not, strength and respect are her God-given birthrights. Oh, come on. Talk with me here. Whether a woman marries or not, strength and respect are her God-given birthrights. You've got to share this with some young girl somewhere, please. And a young man. I know we're focusing on women in this segment, but it's something that needs to be heard across the board. You can find the door out of destructive relationships and recover the parts of your heart and soul you feel you may have lost. It's entirely possible. What kind of longings are steered as you think about where you are in your relationships right now? What kind of longings are steered as you think about where you would like to be in your relationships right now? Beneath the ashes of our past lies a golden core, the intrinsic transcendent reality of being created 
in the very image of God. The desire for romance and the beauty of a good relationship for deep connections with people that last through thick and thin is like a homing device that God installs in your hearts early on. Unless we have completely short-circuited, this is the very desire that will lead us home sexually in the most real sense of the word. Perhaps the sexual connections you've made with, with men or women in your past are bleeding over into your ability to give your hearts to the right person right now. As a woman, you are designed for deep and lasting attachment. Woman, you need attachment. You're wired for attachment. You are not made to detach. I don't care if you change your gender. I don't care if you change your preferred gender. Your wiring cannot be changed. You cannot be cut open, gutted out, software taken out, and rewired. It doesn't work that way. I don't care what's misfiring. You cannot be rewired. You are wired for relationship. You are wired for connection. You are wired to be valued, respected, and cherished. That's why your heart is broken. That's why your heart is broken after relationship, after relationship, after relationship. That's why your heart is broken by that same person for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I've gotten up to 40 years of a woman's heart being broken with one person because she's going against the wiring of her system. Thank you for that cast app that came through. I think it said Ebony. Fundamentally, no matter what we achieve or accomplishment or accomplish, our lives are empty without relationship of duration and depth. Fundamentally, it is this life of relationship that the sexual insanity of our day threatens. Relationships, especially those between men and women, are inherently hard to sustain. I need you to listen to this and I'm going to try to close here. I stayed on way longer than I, I planned and I apologize for that. I like to do less than an hour, but we, we're, we're doing so good here. Fundamentally, it is this life of relationship that the sexual insanity of our day threatens. Relationship, especially those between men and women, are inherently hard to sustain. Why is relationship hard to sustain? I'm glad you asked. Because they require every part of you. You need to write this in your journal. They require every part of you. Relationship requires every part of me. Relationship requires every part of you. Mind, body, and soul. And it requires it intact and capable of committing. Capable of committing your heart into the safekeeping of another. And if you cannot give every part of you, you should not be looking for another relationship. Longing, yes. Looking, no. You have to have this intact because he or she is going to require every part of you, your mind, your body, your soul, and they're going to require it and deserve it intact and you to be capable of committing your heart into the safekeeping of another. Not the meals, not that you bring home the bacon and you stir it up in the pan, not even that you can give them sex. What they are going to require is the commitment of your heart. Can you give your heart away? Do you possess your heart? Do you own your heart? Is your heart even there anymore? You cannot give what you do not have. Has some of those relationships not worked? Could it be a blessing at this point? Would you have lost it if you've gained it? Because bits and pieces of you is scattered all over the place? I invite you. Let me know if you want to accept the invitation. This is an RSVP to you. I invite you to explore the world of your sexuality in ways that perhaps you never have to consider with me on a journey. Come on. The power and beauty 
God pours out on you as woman, as female. Your sexual experience with men may be little or may be great. The good news is that beneath all of the ashes of your stories, all of the ashes of your past, all of the lies, the hurts, the abandonment, misunderstanding, giving yourself away. As I opened up this teaching tonight, I gave mine away on purpose. Oh, if I could talk to the young girls about the power that I gave away. Being created in the very image of God as a woman. If you listen to the longings of your heart, the heart that God gave you, probably not the one you possess after all the trauma, the heart that God gave you, you will find your way home. Who's going to take the journey with me? Who's going to pledge to take the journey with me? Put it on Facebook. I pledge to take this journey with you, Dr. Suzanne, in Sex in the Soul or the journey on Sex in the Soul or however you want to write it. How many, thank you, Pastor Carolyn, how many want to take this journey with me? I'm inviting you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm, I'm going to take your hand. You're going to feel my hand. And more importantly, you're going to feel God's presence. You're going to feel the ministering of the Holy Spirit to the wounded brokenness of you. Male and female, it doesn't matter. We're speaking to the soul. This isn't a place to, to gather discriminatory facts. And, you know, we're going to talk about scientific facts of a woman versus a man. But we're going to deal with the soul. Come on, Erica. Come on, Renee. Come on, Charity. How many are going to take this, this pledge with me? Come on, Abby, you vow. I'm going to take the journey with you, Apostle. I know I'm going to cry. Come on, Brittany. Come on, Crystal. I, there, there may be nights when I cry, Carla. And there may be nights if I do my job right, people, that you might not like me. Come on, Cheryl. Come on, Lisa. But if I do my job right, you will get upset with me and you will get right back into purpose. Come on, Melissa. Come on, Pastor Carolyn. Come on, Crystal. Come on, Agnes. Come with me. Come with me. Come on, Pastor D. Titles don't matter here. Gender doesn't matter here. Age doesn't matter. Come on, Deborah. Come on, Shana. I'm, I'm waiting for you guys. Come on. Come on, Ebony. How about on Periscope? Anyone? Come on, Taco. Come on, Vanessa. Come on with me. Come on, Patricia. Come on, guys. It's time. Come on, Monica. Come on, my sisters. Come on, YouTubers. Come on, Periscopers. Come on, Facebook. Come on, take the journey with me. Take my hand. You feel it? Can you sense my hand there with you? I'm cheering you on. I'm supporting you. Come on, Crystal. Let's go on the journey, Carla. This is going to be an evolution of you. Come on, Kurt. Hallelujah. Oh, healing is going to take place. Deliverance is going to take place. My personality is going to be transformed and the renewing of my mind is going to take place. I'm not going to be so influenced and impacted and infected by reality show, magazines, this perfect imperfection. Come on, Misha. Take the journey with me. Anyone on Periscope? Give me some names. Ebony. Ebony, come on with me. Come on, Yvonne. China Blue. 97. Come on, China. Minister Tosh. Come on, Tasha. Come on, CW. You haven't left me yet. Come on, Charity. Good. An evolution of me. Awesome. Well, go back and hit the replay. Please inbox someone's messenger. Tell them you've got to watch this. It's about sex and it's what you haven't heard before. I'm going to make sure this is uploaded tonight on YouTube. We're going to send, we'll send it out. I know it's late, but we'll still send it out as a live event. And if anyone wants to catch it on YouTube tonight, you can catch it on YouTube tonight. Remember, we're on Spotify, iTunes podcast, 
um, Google Podcasts, so many platforms that I've never heard of before. But now you can listen to us on an MP3. You can put your phone in your pocket, your earbuds in your ear. You can walk, you can jog, you can ride your bike, you can get in your car, you can be on lunch break, at your desk, in your kitchen cooking. Put your earbuds in, put the MP3 on and get detoxed because we've got the answer to your soul solution. Thank you, Ebony. You can cash at me tonight. I appreciate any amount from a dollar to a million dollars. You can sow into this. If you like this teaching, if it's affecting your life, impacting and changing you, give, give so that we can keep these things going on. I couldn't do a couple of things I wanted to do on YouTube tonight because I don't have a thousand followers. If you can, Ask some of your friends to follow us on YouTube so that we can get it up to a, probably a thousand now where I can actually go live right into YouTube and not have to use these other platforms that cause us problems, which you noticed tonight because we could not broadcast on YouTube at the same time. But I thank you all for joining me tonight. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Um, please, please, please register on the website. I send out text messages, going live tonight, get the best seat in the house. So if you're at work during the day, you'll be prepared. You can get your notebook, your journal, your tissue, whatever your favorite drink is. Uh, isn't this prophetic for us tonight? Oh, the places you'll go. That's where you're gonna go with me tonight. Hey, Bishop Jay, he stayed with us. Love you all so much. Thank you. Kashwada, Kashada, thank you so much for your... Uh, Cash App tonight. Cash App is Suzanne M. Howard. Suzanne M. Howard. I love you all. God bless you. See you on again. Please make sure. Thank you, Brittany, for sewing tonight. Please make sure that you subscribe so that you can get those messages and you'll be given advance notice of when I'm coming on tonight um, throughout the rest of this week. we got to do another one. We've got to move into another one. Um, and we're going to talk about some reflections. So replay this, journal some notes down in your journal so that when we get on next time, we deal with discussion and reflections and we can move right in. I promise you, this is a walk on the beach, not a walk in the park, but a walk on the beach. What do I mean? You're going to start on the sand and then your toes are going to get wet and then your ankles are going to get wet. Then your calves are going to get wet. You're going to be knee deep and it's up to you how far you want to go from there. But we're going to get into your sexual issues and we're going to bring you into a place of wholeness and healing. In Jesus' name, pray for me tonight, please. And I want to pray for all of you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, good night.